Hey guys, Gabe Cord over here with Firepoint. Uh, we're going to let everything connect up here for a second. So please stand by and we're going to get rolling on this PPC uh, conversion webinar. So here we go live in just a couple seconds. All right, I believe we are live, everybody. We are here with uh, Paul Campbell from Portland, uh, team lead agent, uh, and Nick Hamilton. He is the head of our PPC department. How's it going, guys? It's going yeah. great. Awesome. We are going to jump right into this. This is take two. We had some technical difficulties with our uh, our webinar software a couple days ago, so we're going to go again. Uh, we're going to jump right in. This is all about PPC, how we get the leads, uh, how we reach out to them, how do we get more conversion uh, and more money. So we're going to start, Nick, with you. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to share my screen. I want you to talk about um, when, when, when you're running PPC generation for FirePoint clients, right? And you don't have to hire us to do it. Uh, we do have a, a small management fee, which is 10%, but we allow our clients to do this. You can do this on your own. We're going to give you the, the top couple things that you need to do and look out for that you might be doing wrong. So Nick, I guess, first of all, tell us a little bit, I guess your background and you got, you have a certain uh, status level with, with Google. Is that correct to, to do what yeah. you do? Yeah, so just to let you know, you know, I, I lead the team here at Firepoint. Been in PPC since 2010, so yeah, you know, we're, we're talking about eight years of experience now. Uh, a lot of verticals, but in the last two years, real estate's been my focus. Uh, we are premier partners with Google. What that means is there's a certain amount of ad spend we spend. We are certified. We have multiple people who are certified uh, to work on accounts, and just all in all, Google loves us. So uh, yeah, premier partner status. Perfect. That's awesome. And I know not a lot of people go through that. So we appreciate it. And I know our clients love it. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. I want to jump right in and uh, start showing people what you're doing when you're talking about creating these ads. So let me share that screen real quick. All right. You guys can see my screen, right? Yes. All right. Yes, we got sir. Paul's beautiful site pulled up. Love that picture. Um, so I guess tell us a little bit about what you're doing, what we need to be doing when we're building ads. And I guess we can probably start when we, we're talking ads is like when somebody types in Portland Homes for Sale, we're talking about these bad boys here that say ad, correct? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the, Google reserves the first four spots when anytime a search is done for ads. They don't always use it, but most of the time they do, particularly in competitive verticals like this. So yeah, you see that ad, that means it is something done out of AdWords. Uh, things to know, big mistakes people make, they don't tend to go geo with this. Uh, you know, for example, all of these say Portland on them. If okay. you just build something that says homes for sale and throw it out there, that could, anyone searching for anything, you, you don't know what it means. So make sure you really focus on where you want people. So if you're just saying Portland, are you saying, I mean, if I typed in and I'm using keywords is what you're talking about, I think if I'm doing like Portland homes for sale, they could be getting Portland, Maine, Portland, Oregon, any other Portland could be leads that they're getting, not necessarily looking in their area. Yeah, and also what I'm talking about is sometimes people will do, there's different match types, broad and phrase, where if you just do homes for sale, um, anything anyone types on top of that could could be included. So okay. if someone's sitting in Portland and they type Seattle homes for sale, if you're just using that without that geo modifier on it, you will accidentally be serving your ad to them, and, which is Got a it. Yeah. Got it. And something that I've seen, um, I've seen a lot of time when people click these ads uh, or create these ads and then people click on them. So if I've done, and I think this actually might be Paul's ad here. Um, and I just typed it in. So when I, if I, when I click this and I'm not going to, I don't want to cost Paul a, a click. But what I've seen a lot of times is people then drive that to their homepage of their website. Good, bad, indifferent. What are your thoughts? It's definitely not ideal. What I would recommend is if you go in and do search, uh, you search for Portland real quick. Okay. Um, let's get to all those listings. So, people so not just a landing page, because this could be all cities. What you're saying is go to your website, type in the city that you're, uh, we want the city, Portland. We're not going to register real quick, so I'm going to get rid of that. All right. All right. And so if you look at that URL up there, uh, if you copy that URL and put it directly into your ad, this is what people will see when they arrive. They'll arrive okay. on Sport Portland, which is the most relevant. You want to right. modify it with price, anything you want to show, number of bedrooms, all of that. Just set up the search how you want to see it. Then you can just copy and paste that URL, and it'll take people right back right. to it. Yeah. And what I like to talk about, the reason I wanted to bring that up is I call it the path of least resistance, right? So if somebody's on here and they're typing in Portland homes for sale, where I see people wasting money is they're driving them to this landing page, this, this homepage of their website. And now it's forcing them to type in, Portland again. They're already typed this in. We already know what they're looking at. So if they come here, they may bounce. They may hit the back button to go right back here. We want to give them what they search for. So if they already typed in Portland homes for sale, 
what Nick is saying is give them exactly what they typed in. Go in before you create a land, actually just come in, type in what you want them to see, and then use this link up here, right? Mm -hmm. if, exactly. Phrase that correctly for you. Cool. Um, and then as far as if we are looking at prices, if there's a big span, I'm going to get rid of this because we're not registering. So we see anything from, I mean, we've got, yeah, they're all pretty close here, but a lot of times we see where it might be anywhere from 200 to a million. Do you recommend maybe doing a certain price point, like the average price point, so it's not too overwhelming or just give them everything? No, I recommend particularly, uh, and I don't know that Portland's one of these markets, but a lot of MLSs will include rentals. And okay. so getting that minimum on there is very important because if they come to a site and they see, a twelve hundred dollar home, they're going right. to click on it, thinking, "Well, I want information about this because that's cheap." Right. Uh, so we always say, find the minimum. Don't necessarily go for your median as your minimum. You know, right. a little below, but find where you want it to start. So yeah. that you're seeing the correct. List. And, and that's a great point. I talk to a lot of you guys uh, that are watching this and listening to this at conferences, and when you're asking about FirePoint and our PPC, uh, do you guys generate a lot of rental leads and stuff like that? That's something that's just going on with whoever's managing your account or with you, because they're probably, right, Nick, not putting in that minimum price, so mm -hmm. we're not showing those low price points to get them to hit. Yes, and another thing they might be doing is it's very important. There's something called negative keywords. Okay. Basically what they are is they say, if someone does a search query and this word appears, we don't want our ad to show. So no. rental, leaps, these are keywords that if people haven't put negatives in the account, they can accidentally be serving their ads on them. Right. So somebody might just have Portland Homes as their keyword, as I'm showing here. But if a, if, if, if a consumer came in and typed in Portland Homes for rent and they don't have for rent or lease as a negative keyword, then their Portland Homes is going to charge them for the leads that are typing in for rent. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Someone now clicked on their ad, which you know, ironically, it's not showing one right now, but it will. Right. Um, yeah, that would be just wasted spend because you're not looking for rentals. Okay, so big things for people to think about is if you're going to do this yourself, uh, understand what you're doing. Make sure you know where you're landing them. Give them that path of least resistance. Land them on whatever they want to see when they come in in the first place. And my and one then, other big tip would be understand your match types. You know, I, I, we could do a whole presentation on that. But for now, basically, just go into Google and learn what they are. They're, it's very simple. But a lot of people don't understand what a broad match is, what a phrase right. is, and how right. it affects your account. You know what? And, and I'm going to throw you on the spot here, Nick, and I may, I hopefully you'll have one handy. Um, can you pull up um, a report? Because I want to show people what they also need to look for when they're looking at cost per clicks and cost per leads. Because I don't think people understand this. So I want them to really know what's going on. So I'm going to actually stop sharing. So I think you can share. Yeah. So um, I'd love for you to show what that. Okay, perfect. I think we have it up. Paul, can you see that? Yep, absolutely. Awesome. So one of the things we provide here is we want to make sure our clients understand where their money's going. Uh, yeah, so we don't we don't go all the way down to the ad group level or the keyword level because that's just that's so much data that it would be overwhelming in a report. And what by the way, Damon, if you're watching this, we're showing your numbers. Surprise. Yeah. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll break it down basically by geographic area. You know, people who are searching on keywords with Roanoke in them. You know, this is they dominated this account during this period, and we'll just you know show you how it's being spent, what the results are over a 60 day window, and then, you know, at the bottom kind of a roll up. And so that way you can jump between, uh, this one not zoomed in as well, but you get the idea. You yeah, kind of jump zoom in on that a little bit. I want to show them just so at the top the header, what they're looking for. So I want to make sure everybody understands the difference between, there's a difference between cost per click guys and a cost per lead. And it's something that you need to watch, right? Yeah, and that's a good point. This actually, uh, gets confused a lot in this industry. So CPC, cost per click, someone clicks on your ad, what you're paying. CPL, right. cost per lead, when you get a lead, what you've paid to get that lead. Because not right. every click will be a lead. Yeah, so uh, guys, what's happening, I'm going to break that down just because it makes sense to you and I, we do this all the time. But guys, if you're listening, when that ad shows and they click on it, they may come to Paul's site. And then when that registration screen comes up, they may say, uh, no, thanks and leave, you still got charged the click, which is that far right column, but it didn't result in a lead. So you really have to monitor both because I've seen people make it, oh, I'm gonna just go in the city because my cost per click is super, super low, but they're not converting to lead. So you really have to make sure at the end of the day, if they don't register and you don't get the information, uh, you don't get the conversion. Exactly. And cool. so, um, yeah, and that's one of the things we like to show you is just the difference between cost per click. And I've actually talked to people who don't understand this difference and think that they would they would tell me they're like, I'm getting a dollar leads. And I'm like, No, I think you're getting dollar clicks. You know, I don't believe you're getting dollar leads in your market. So yeah. very important yep. to understand the difference. Absolutely. 
Cool. So, all right. So the path of least resistance, show them what they're looking for. Make sure you're using negative keywords, monitor your spend, and just understand how it works through Google. And and guys, you can do this on your own. It's not tough. But also I, what I've seen when when I've done this in, my, in, our, in our own real estate company versus having somebody like Nick do it, night and day difference. My time is better spent doing what we're going to be doing with Paul here in a minute, which is calling leads and processing leads and, and going through it. So any last words, Nick, or, or have you shared all your words of wisdom? That's what I have for you guys today. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel, you know, obviously as the expert, I feel you should always hire the expert, but it does make a difference to have someone who's done this before. I agree 100%. So cool. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good Paul and I are going to jump Nick. in and, and, and process some leads. All, All right. right. Have a good day, guys. Awesome, guys. Thanks, Nick. All right. So um, just a little backstory. I called Paul about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm I'm to own this, Paul. I called Paul and said, hey, I'm doing this PPC conversion. We're going to be talking to people how to do this. I'm, I, I'm not a fan of staged environments, right? This is real world. So I called Paul. I said, Paul, we're going to jump in your account. Will you jump on? Can we make some calls? Let's process some leads live. Let's do this. And, and Paul, said, yes. said, Paul said, <laughs> why not? Let's do this. So what I'm going to do, guys, all right, I'm going to share my screen again here, Paul, one second. One second here. And what we're going to do, all right, so I'm going to get rid of by Google. We don't need you anymore. So this is Paul's uh, front-facing website. All right, and then the back end. All right, and I'm going to refresh this to see if we don't have anybody new that's come in. So what we're going to do, guys, is I'm just going to focus on PPC. These are PPC leads that came in the exact way that we just told you. I want to go through, and we're going to toggle a little bit between a slideshow uh, and and real life, because I want to share with you guys what I think needs to happen. So I think everybody can. Oh, I'm going to swap these. All right, should be good now. Uh, I think everybody can generate and convert PPC like a rock star. I'm a big fan of what Nick said is um, hiring somebody to do PPC because your time is better spent doing this. Um, I, you guys already know who I am. I'm going to skip through that. The big thing is people are like, where do I start? All right. Where do I start when it comes to to processing these? What are the right steps? What's going on? That's and a video. <laughs> it's not too bad, right? You know what I love is she keeps getting up. She keeps getting up. I love it. Absolutely. But, you know, with me and my team, uh, my last full year running the team uh, uh, with my, the other team leads, we did a little over 800 sales. Guys, most of those were PPC. We understood it. And I'm just going to share with you some of the steps that we've done and even where we've taken it to the next level to get those conversions. But you have to have a starting point. All right. So I'm a big fan of where you start. I know PPC people are thinking, oh, my gosh, this is this ugly monster hunting your bed. It's a waste of money. Guys, it's not. There's good and bad to both of them. And that's what I want to share with you a little bit before we jump in and process. So here's the bad. All right. It is a long conversion time, nine to 14 months. They don't know you. All right. We are forced registering. We showed you we're driving somebody who's just searching a term that says homes for sale in Portland and forcing them to register. They're probably just doing some fact finding and thinking. It's a lot different than when they raise their hand saying uh, like on, on Realtor.com or Zillow saying, hey, I have a question. I want to three Main Street. Those people are further down the pipeline. So this cash conversion cycle that we're looking at here on a PPC is nine to 14 months and they don't know you. You have to win them over. All right. The good, though, they're inexpensive. I don't know about you, Paul, and I don't know about all the people listening, but I don't have a ton of extra money laying around that I can just throw away uh, on super expensive leads. I need to have a mix of leads coming in that I can afford and build a pipeline and a database to not just feed my business today, but to feed my business down the road. All right. Absolutely. So the good, they're cheap, right? They're cheap. I love Zillow, Realtor.com leads, guys. I'm not saying don't get them, but in a lot of markets are two, three, four, five hundred dollars each each. So it takes a while. All right. I need to feed in some five, 10, $15 uh, leads as well. All right. And there is huge ROI. If you stick out a process and we're going to show you how to do this, we're going to go through like the five or six must things to do. And I'm going to go between uh, the slideshow and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the real life leads uh, back and forth so you can see what we're doing. But there is a huge ROI potential. If you just follow the steps, it's all about having a system and Paul, you're a FirePoint client and whether you're using FirePoint or something else, have that foundation CRM that can do all this stuff for you so that you can go through the steps that you need to do on your own. And then which ones you can do and initiate and automate uh, like drip campaigns and safe searches and stuff like that. So, all right, Paul, uh, what I'm going to do what is I'm going to go through the steps. We're going to go in through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight what we need to do. So the first thing we need to do, review any activity prior to making initial call. All right. So what I'm going to do is, oh, what's happening here? What's happening? 
Trying to go back over to the other screen. Come on, come on. Why is it not going? What's happening? What's going on? Technical difficulties. All right, we're gonna come over here. Don't know why. All right, we're just gonna start with a lot. The one at the top is the most recent one that came in. All right, Christy. All right, guys, you're gonna get bad names. You're gonna get good names. We're gonna get information we don't know. This is part of the process, All right? Instantly when I know, she came in, there was a search of one plus bedrooms. There was a 10,000 minimum. This is because Nick was telling us about that. He wanted to weed out rentals uh, with a 175. She's in Hillsboro. That must, is that an area in your market? Absolutely. Perfect. So what I was saying when I said, I want you to review it ASAP is this really time to lead or right, our speed to lead. We want to do this as quickly as possible. Now these came in a little bit ago, but we wanted to leave some leads to work live with you guys is I want you to come in and look, did they look at anything? All right. I can tell she looked at one property, one's enough, um, and it was 165000 in this market. All right, going into this, what I'm going to ask Paul to do, and Paul, go ahead and give this gal a call. Hit mute. We're not going to put you that much on the spot right now, um, but what I want you to do on the initial call, and I'm going to get in here really quick again, is what I want to do on the initial call is use your call recording. All right, I'm going to show them how you're doing that here in a second. Um, use the call recording. If they answer, keep it short, all right? Don't ask if, it, uh, what was her name on there? Uh, it was Christy. Something Don't ask box. if it's, yeah, yeah Christy. All of us, I'm gonna assume if it's a female voice, I'm gonna assume it's Christy, all right? I want you to say, hey, Christy, this is Paul. I wanna see how your home search is going here in the Portland area. I saw you're on portlandpropertyfinders.com. Something short and sweet. Do not ask how you are or is this Christy. She already registered. If it's a female voice, just assume, all right? Um, don't leave a voicemail though if she does not answer. All right, but please, when you call, just listen to what the voicemail says and then hang up and we'll play it back in in, uh, in FirePoint. So go ahead and hit mute uh, and make the call for me. All right. So what I'm asking Paul to do is use a built-in dialer. I think any time that we can record calls, guys, use a built-in dialer, click on it so that when you place the call right in the system, that the call pops in here, all right? So he's gonna call through these. I don't want him to leave a voicemail. The reason I asked him to listen is we're gonna call this lead multiple times, whether it's today, tomorrow, or the next day. And we need information, all right? So the more information we have when I come back to this lead, because if you notice, let me go back out to the leads list, there's multiple leads, right? I'm not gonna remember something that I talked to somebody about or what a voicemail said when I come back to it. So anything that I can remember about Christy or I can just read, I don't have to remember. So as, as Paul's going through that, he's gonna go through it. It'll be right in the, in, in the history, all right? So we're also gonna talk about a double dial. More often than not, we get voicemails. And, and again, we're doing this live, so we don't know what's gonna happen. Um, oh, switch screens here on you. Uh, we don't know if he's gonna get her on the phone. I'm trying to watch the video to see if he's talking or not. Uh, Paul, give me a thumbs up if you're talking. Oh, he's actually on the phone, so he can't hear me. So he may have got her. Whatever it is, we're gonna find out. But what we're gonna talk about is if he doesn't get, we're gonna talk in terms of what happens most often. Most often, we don't actually get a, a, a person on the phone listen to the voicemail, all right? What I'm listening for, does it say, this is Christy, leave a message, all right? Call completed, so I'm guessing it was pretty short. So Paul, you back? Uh, can't hear you, you're gonna have to unmute one second, my friend. I'm back. All right, so we get a voicemail? We got a voicemail. All right. It was well, in fact, Miss Christy Box, female voice, even said her name right okay. there loud and clear. All right, so people, I'm gonna guess people thought this was probably a fake name. All right, I did, so let's be honest, and I don't know if we're gonna be able to actually hear this uh, because of the webinar, um, but if I was to hit play, you're right, she said her first and last name. Hello, this is Christy Box. So yeah. here's what I want you, here's what I'd recommend. Right? Oh, that's a good number right there. Good number, so voicemail said it was, was Christy. Yep. Did not leave voicemail. And I could I listen to it. Make a I make a joke about her name either. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I appreciate that. Um, all right, we are on here. Uh, logged it so we know that when we come back later, that it's it's um, we got the right voicemail. So here's what I recommend. And Paul, you just have to trust me on this. Always do. Call back. Put it on mute. Call back again. Do not leave a voicemail. Okay. Right? If she answers, like, oh, uh, hello, because a lot of times they're like, why is this person calling and they leave a voicemail? I just, I kind of lie. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but I lied to that person. Oh, you know what? I, I got cut off before I could leave a voicemail. I'm glad you answered this time. Same script, All right? So hit mute. Call right back. So what Paul is doing, guys, <clears throat> this is a double dial. All 
All right. The idea is you rec you see a phone number that you don't recognize. All right. They don't leave a voicemail. A lot of times it kind of gets your curiosity going. Right. What's going on? What, what who was this person? It increases your chance of an answer. And at the end of the day, anytime we're doing lead generation on leads for people we don't know, it's all about getting them on the phone. More often than not, I don't remember the exact stat. They're out there. Google it. Um, but it's like 70 or 80 percent. It's super high. People work with the first agent they make contact with or that makes contact with them. That is a huge number. So if I can get a second call uh, in there that gets them to answer, um, I'm going to do that all day long. So it's called a double dial. Again, don't leave that voicemail on the first one because the script is on the second time if they answer. It's just going to be like, oh, hey, Christy, you know, uh, Paul here at Stellar Realty um, just tried you, but I, I, I lost connection before I could leave a voicemail, so I wanted to call right back and reach out. See how your home search here is going? I saw you were on my website. Shut up. Let them talk. Get them going. All right? One thing I love doing in that script, and this is all being recorded, guys. Uh, somebody posted it. Is it being recorded? Listen to these back. Short and sweet um, and, and to the point. When you identify who you are and why you're calling, that concern goes down. Okay, so he just left another voice, uh, or he just did another call. I saw it popped in automatically. So she, I'm guessing she did not answer. She did not answer. Okay. She did not right. fall for your trick, Gabe. She did not, but that's okay. We have another. We have another. So what I want, Paul, and I'm just going to do it because I'm logged in as Paul so you guys can see it. Guys, we called, didn't leave a voicemail. We double dialed, didn't leave a voicemail. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to send a text. All right? I'm going to send a text to Christy. Any idea what, Paul, do you know what this text is supposed to say? Is this Christy? Three words, no more, no less. Is, and I'm going to go ahead and send it on my side, Paul, just so they can see. Is this uh, Christy? Question mark. That is it. Make sure you spell it correctly. She spelled it like that. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to hit send. All right. What we're doing, guys, is kind of put yourself in Christy's shoes. You just got a call from somebody that you didn't recognize. Didn't answer it, but they called right back. And they didn't leave voicemail, but they called right back. Didn't leave voicemail again, second time. Now, those of you that have kids or loved ones, married, significant other, whatever it is, when you see two calls um, from somebody you don't know and then they send you a message calling you by name, what do you think? You think something might be wrong, something's happening, right? The whole idea is getting them to respond. What happens, and like we're, again, this is a real lead. We, we, we don't know who this is, is what happens a lot of times is they'll respond, yes, who is this? Or, yes, or who is this? We already know it's the right number because of her voicemail. She doesn't know that, right? So, so this is where, you know, we're, we're making sure that what's going on. So we're processing this lead and going. So we're going to move on to the next step, though, all right? We'll see if she responds here in a second. So um, do not leave a voicemail. Note if there are any details. We're going to go on there. All right, I'm not going to go to the presentation. It's a, it's a pain. Uh, double dial. Call right back again. Don't leave a voicemail. We did it, all right? Send the text, three little words, no more, no less, just like I said, is this, and put the lead's name in there, all right? Next step is creating a safe search, all right? Don't be too specific, guys. If you're watching this, this is huge. Do not be too specific, all right? Search results need to be about 200, and I want you to send them daily, all right? Now, everybody panics on this. Don't panic. I know that if I was actually working with a buyer, I'm not going to send them 200 homes to filter through. I get it. I've been doing this for 15 years, selling hundreds and hundreds of homes a year. But we need to remember what we're doing. This lead came in. They're looking for pretty pictures of pretty homes. They looked at one property. How am I going to get this person back to the site, Paul? What do I need to send her? You need to get her on a saved search. Right. Send her pretty pictures of pretty homes because remember, she came in landed on a page similar to this of Portland Homes and registered and gave and us her correct magic, information. By the way, this right? well, across the board, especially with even Realtor.com leads and Zillow leads. Especially Realtor.com and Zillow leads, guys. Uh, just because he said that, I'm going to go off on a, on a, on a rabbit trail here. Um, if, you get, if you're paying for Zillow and Realtor.com leads, your number one objective, get them on the phone. Number two, get them off of Realtor and, uh, and Zillow. That is like a, that is the jungle with lots of predators. All those other agents are predators. They want that wounded animal. Christy's a, if Christy came from Zillow or realtor.com, she's a wounded animal going through the jungle and there's all these predators, right? It's a little dramatic. But, <laughs> it is, but I, you know me. Get them off there because that's where you're going to lose them. Have your scripts, your sites, your site should, you know, Firepoint, others, whatever it is, they should be updating about every 15 minutes. The number one complaint on Zillow and realtor is what? They're not up to date. People are inquiring on homes that are already sold. 
educate them, get them on your website. They should be living right here because once they register, they only see Paul's <laughs> smiling face. They don't see all the other agents next to it every time they click on something. You've got to get them off. All right, sorry, got me off on a rabbit trail. So, it's a good one. Uh, came in. If they looked at two or three homes, just kind of get an idea of, uh, of, of where they're looking. But again, we do not want to be specific. We want to create a safe search. She looked in Hillsboro. <clears throat> I don't know where Hillsboro is. Um, so is that near Portland? Where's that at? Uh, it's basically Portland. All right. So if west. I type in just Hillsboro, there's 180. That's not too bad. So All there's right. West Hills, then there's out there. There's Hillsboro. Yeah. My yeah. goal is 200. I mean, she looked at one in there. Is there a neighboring town? Maybe right next to it I could add? Aloha, Beaverton. They kind of creep into that realm. Uh, Hillsboro's going nuts, though. though. Great place to All buy. right. So here's what I'm going to do. And the guys, follow me here. I'm up to 461 results. I know this lead is probably not going to want to see the filter through 400. And I also know they're not going to want to probably travel huge areas. I mean, I could even add Portland over if I wanted to. There's a method to my ad, my madness. I swear, I promise. All right. What I want to do, open it up, get it over 200, 461. I love it. All right. Homes for Christie. All right. Daily. We default this to daily for a reason for you guys in FirePoint because most safe searches are being set up without ever talking to a new lead. Send them daily. The reason I'm sending them daily, even though it's 461 and I can hear people sighing probably, day one, it sends an email. It previews like five or six homes, all right? Uh, or a, pre, uh, a preview picture of five or six homes. And then it's a link. See the remaining, you know, 455. The only way it's going to send an update result, we've all seen this via our MLS or something, is if something new matches that criteria. If I dialed these results down too small to where it was like 30 or 40 homes, like in that price range, she looked at 180,000 or whatever it was. If I sent her homes between 160 and 210, how many homes would be on the market? A couple? Hardly. Yeah. And then what are the chances? Yeah. And what are the chances that a new one would come on the market tomorrow or the next day or have a price change? Almost zero. Slim to none. So that means they're not getting an email from you, which is an invitation to come back to your site. All right. So we want this to be daily. All right. Uh, have it come from the team. I'm going to put it from Kiki because that's who it was assigned to. Uh, and we're going to send it to this email address uh, that's in there. Do you want it to send? Yeah. Now? Yes. All right. Once I send that, I can now see that it's sent. All right. We want to get these going. Just because she looked at one home here doesn't mean she's only looking in that area or in that price point. We don't know. Here's what's awesome is because we just set this up, it's going to take us to our next step. So this email will go out. Once it goes out here in the next few minutes, you'll actually see that it's gone out. You'll also see if she's opened it or not. All right. But the next thing that we're going to do is we want to send her a follow-up and it sets up expectations. So we've already had a couple of contacts with her. Now we're going to send an email. All right. Paul, are you a bomb bomber? Yes, I am. You are. So I'm not going to send this, but I'm going to show you what I want you to do, and you can do it on your side. We're not going to look at it. Wow. Um, is I'm, I want you to hit uh, record right here, and I'm you can listen to me. I'm going to delete this. No, don't be afraid. You're already I'm on video talking. right now. I'm on video right now. <laughs> Whoa, I zoomed in too much. All right, hold on. I'm going to give you a countdown. Hey, Christy, Gabe Cordova here with Stellar Realty in Portland. Uh, reached out a couple times. Sorry, I missed you. Want to let you know, I, I'm going to start sending you some listings in the Aloha, Beaverton, uh, Hillsboro area. Um, I want to make sure that uh, you're seeing some listings. If there's any adjustments I can make, uh, whether it's area or price or something like that, uh, just let me know. I'd love to make those adjustments so we can find that right property for you and your family. Thanks. All right. So what I did... I recapped, hey, it was me that called. Sorry that I missed you. I'm going to add this to the email. All right. Uh, oh, you got to put a name in there. It doesn't matter what the name is, by the way. And I'm not going to send this, Paul. Don't panic. She'll, she can see your smiling face and not my ugly mug. Um, but, hey, it was me that reached out. Sorry that I missed you. And the next thing I did is, hey, and by the way, I'm sending you listings. And I kind of gave her parameters. I want her to hear and see. That's why I love doing uh, bomb bomb and video email. I want her to hear and see that I'm sending areas that may not uh, pertain to her. And then I said, if there's any adjustments I can make, please let me know, right? I want to engage her. I want her to raise that hand and say, hey, you know what? I'm only looking in this area or, whoa, you said, because we didn't put a price range if you remember. Hey, you know what? I'm only qualified up to, you know, 250, whatever that is. Perfect. That changed the whole dynamics of your relationship now. Now she reached out to you so that you can do something, all right? So I'm going to get rid of this. Whatever your script is, is your script, Paul. I'm going to get out of here. 
on this lead so that you can send one. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and set your follow-up task and talk to everybody what I'm doing while you're sending that video and get it sent. All right, sir. You demand. Uh, don't forget to hit mute if you don't want us to listen in on you. Oh, you want to hear it? Uh, oh, yeah, we can hear it if you want to. I'm just kidding. It's up to you. you. I, right. I know you've got stuff to say. Here we go. You're, you're good. All right. So uh, while he's sending that that uh, that follow-up email, the next thing you need to do is make sure we're setting a follow-up, guys. If we don't set follow-ups, we lose track of our leads. All right. So today we've already called twice. We sent a text, uh, and we're sending a video email. It's four touches today. I know a lot of agents that will call later in the day if they want to. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think I'm a firm believer that we're going to lose more leads by not reaching out enough than we will ever lose by reaching out too much. All right. So call again if you want to. Um, what our practice is, and I'm just going to share with what we did though, is I'm just going to put in here call two and leave voicemail. All right. Second day, I am a fan of leaving a voicemail. All right. So that's today. I'm going to set that for tomorrow. It's a phone call. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and set it because that lead was assigned to Kiki. Uh, or, uh, yes, it's on to Kiki. I'm going to create that task. Okay. So now she'll have a task tomorrow when she logs in that she has all of her who people who she needs to call. When she logs in, she's going to see all this. All right. She can quickly look, call. Voicemail said it was Christy. Call. No voicemail. She can see the text was sent. She'll see if there's a response. It'll be logged here if Christy responds. And now there's a follow-up task sent. All right. She's also going to be able to see, all right, did the email go out and has it opened? Once once uh, Christy opens this, we'll be able to see if she opened it. It'll put little eyeballs next to it so you know what's going on and what Christy's doing. All right. This process that we just went through, yes, it's taken us about 25 minutes, should literally take you a minute to two minutes at the very most unless they answer the phone. And that's a good thing, right? Because the whole goal is to get them to talk to you. Um, something else that I'd probably do on this lead, uh, we need to change the status anyway because this is no longer new. A new lead means you've never done anything with it. We've done something with it. So we're going to go in and edit this, all right? So let's move this to unknown. To me, un and I'll just show you all the statuses, all right? There's all these statuses that come pre-filtered or uh, pre-built in. Unknown means I've reached out. I don't know anything about this lead as far as their time frame. It's all time frame and motivation, right? So unknown is, I don't know if they're in the next month or two, or I don't know if they're in the next year or two. So I'm going to leave it as unknown because I can quickly filter my unknown later and know these are people on call night or if I'm going to do a, a, a time block of three hours and just call people to get them on the phone, this is a good spot to start because these are people that are in your pipeline that you need to bubble up. So you're going to move it to unknown. The other thing I'm going to do here is because we autofill names in for the save searches and stuff is I'm just going to correct this because I don't want it to autofill it in uh, this way. Right? just because I want it to look good because it's coming for me. Everything we do in FirePoint makes it look like you're doing it by hand. Um, uh, so if it's uncaps, they know you're probably not going to type like that. So um, we're going to just go ahead and go like that. Hit save. And we are out. That's it for day one, guys. If you guys do that over and over, you're good. Now, I'm a big fan. Call every day. All right, call every day, three times a day for three days. And I'm going to get back to the slideshow. Three times a day or three contacts a day for three days. So tomorrow I'm going to call. And actually what I can do is I could just check all three of these. Uh, one second. We can do call, leave, do not leave voicemail. Send text, send email asking if... They've seen property listings. You can put them all in one, or you can create three separate uh, tasks, whatever you want to do. Uh, Paul, are you back? Um, I think you're muted, though, just FYI. Um, all right, so I got my tasks for tomorrow. It's my three contacts that I want Kiki to make tomorrow. All right, I can see that Paul sent an email right here. Um, if I wanted to view it, I'm not going to put him through it all, but here's the email that he sent, all right? And I can also see all the statuses of all the things that we've changed, all right? We've processed lead. Again, this should be a minute to two minutes on this lead. That's all you need to do. We've updated it. So, Paul, while you're gone, just so you know, I created the task for Kiki tomorrow, change the status, uh, so we're all good to go on that, all right? This is really rinse and repeat. It's kind of the same thing over and over. I'm going to toggle through and see... If there's anything, so wrong number, we're good to go here. I'm going to check some stuff, Paul, just to see what's going on, make some suggestions for people. So this person came in, looked at five properties. Let's see, 400, 330, 299. It's a little bit here and there. 
and I still can't hear you, Paul. Just I think you might be muted. Um, all right, so I'm going to look at the safe search. So there is a safe search that the agent set up, uh, 250 to 400,000. So if you're a team lead and you're watching this to see what's going on, you're trying to get conversion up on PPC. 164 results. It looks like she did a, a parameter. I'm not sure where she got this information from. So I'm going to go back. Was there a phone? No, it was, it was a wrong number. So there's no phone call. If it were me or if I was in Paul's shoes, I would go in and I'd open up the safe search. I don't know. Um, what I'm guessing the agent did is looked at uh, Portland, Portland, Portland. Um, how did I lose Paul? I'm not sure. I know we, we can see Paul. We just can't hear him. Paul, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Oh, Paul can hear me. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if I can unmute him. Well, we may not get to hear Paul anymore. So Paul might just have to sit here in silence. So Paul, I would go in, edit this and open it up. We need something to go out every single day. All right. I'm a big fan of putting a wrong number tag. That way I can filter them out real quick and see what's going. Um, I do love to see if... Um, They've opened any of the emails to see. So we've delivered two. They haven't opened any. All right, so we're good to go. I'm going to look for one to process that maybe has a little bit more meat to it. So it looks like Paul's going to need to kick his team in gear a little bit here on some of these leads. Um, I really wanted to see. Oh, really? Future Beaverton, I told her we'd send her listings. Continue to check. Perfect. So we made communication, logged call. Valid phone number, so we got some good stuff. Same thing's happening, and it looks like we have follow-ups coming. So guys, it's the same thing over and over. So I'm gonna go through one more real quick um, that hasn't been processed. Um, Paul, I think you can hear me. If you can go on to Paula uh, Prairia, whatever her name is, looked at three properties, looked at this one twice uh, in the area 215. She's in here. We're going to do the same same exact thing. So while Paul's doing his uh, his call on that, again, I just want to look at the, the search. All right. What happens is, see this note right here, guys? A lot of systems, Firepoint, one of them, we will create safe searches for you. Okay. Our philosophy is if any safe search is better than no safe search. All right. They still come with limitations because we're going to base it on the search activity of what the lead did. All right, I highly recommend if you're an agent or you're the team lead and you see that your lead is on a, 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 a safe search has been created by the system, still come look at it. Is it big enough and broad enough? And I know I'm spending a lot of time on safe searches, but to me, short of the phone call, it is the most important thing that you can do, right? You need to get them on a safe search. So we're at 142. I don't think that's enough. To me, when you're, when you're that far under 200, again, they're only going to get an email if one of these properties has a price change or something else in this uh, uh, criteria changes. So what I would do, open this up. Again, we have not spoke with this person yet. We want them to tell us that their price range is this or they wanna be here, all right? So I'm just gonna open up the price range. It's 550,000. I'm gonna hit, or 553 results. I'm gonna come down, hit save. And now we're going to have more emails going out, all right? So it'll still only go out daily based on what's going on, but I want one to happen every single day. So, um, all right, so we just had this one that just sent. This one got delivered. It hasn't hit our inbox yet. But we want to make sure one is going to go because until I just change that, guess what? Another email didn't go out today and it probably wouldn't have. I need to keep pretty pictures of pretty homes in their, uh, in their inbox uh, so that they keep coming back to my website, not my competitors, not Zillow not Trulia. All right, so we got all of those going. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back over here uh, while we're waiting for Paul to come back in. All right, create safe search. We're gonna be able to go through all these. Video email, keep it short, set expectations on the follow-up. Remember in that video email, I told them that I created a safe search. I'll even name off some of the areas because I want them to hear it and see it when it comes in so that they can ask to make adjustments, all right? And don't be perfect on, the, on these videos. All right, if you're recording a video and you're like, hey, I set up a, a property listings for Beaver, oh no, not Beaverton, for Aloha, and leave that. You don't have to be perfect, be you. Your leads aren't perfect, you're more relatable when everything isn't perfectly staged and, and presented and packaged, just be you. It, it'll make a difference in your conversion. All right, follow-up tasks, 
should be set on every lead. We talked about this. Initial follow-up, uh, FU is a follow-up, it's just shorthand. F initial follow-up is the most important, all right? We're talking about that rule of three, all right? That's what I was telling you about a minute ago. Three touches a day for three days. We called, to me the double dial is really one touch, but we have the double dial, we have the text, we have the video email, all right? Those are my three primary touches, even though I called twice, you could really call it four if you want. Three touches a day for three days. When they start looking into property and asking questions, it's because they don't have an agent most of the time. Yes, sometimes they call when they have an agent because they're on vacation, whatever it is. But most of the time, they don't have that agent. You have to be that first one. Remember the stat. Most people work with the first agent that makes contact with them or reaches back out to them when they register on a website. The first one. It doesn't based on what company they're at. I don't, it doesn't matter you know, if they're independent or if they're, if they're EXP, right? Uh, it's the first person. It doesn't matter if they're brand new, if they've been in the business forever. It's the first person. The stats are out there. Check it out. All right. After three touches a day for three days, it's three touches a week for three weeks. All right. Three touches a month for three months. These are personal touches. All right. Once you go to these three weeks, they could still be on a drip. They should be getting those daily property searches. So they're getting other touches in there. It's okay. All right. These are personal touches. And I probably should just add that in here. But Difference between being an average agent and a top agent is the top agents are going to be willing to do these three touches a day and the steps that we're talking about. All right. Where do you go from here? All right. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. Okay. This is not a lot. If you just watch this back, break down the steps little by little, a little, you can't be overwhelmed in something that takes one to two minutes. It's just getting a process and a system in place. All right. Don't get overwhelmed. All right. Just take it step by step, step by step, all right? And then just pick one thing. If you think it's too much, all right, maybe start with a double dial. Or if you're texting before you're calling, maybe switch that around. Or if you're texting a big long thing, which I see most agents do, their for initial text is, hey, this is Gabe at Stellar Realty uh, EXP, and uh, I'm the best agent in Portland, and you should really, like, it's just too much. They're like throwing up all over them, all right? Keep it short. I would challenge you to pick one thing is, is this Christy or whatever the lead register is at? You will start seeing those responses come back, all right? I'm a big fan of starting from a point of honesty. If you're wanting to get higher conversion, whether it's PPC uh, or anything like that, um, you have to understand what your what your weaknesses are, where you need to work on in your business, and, and this is being honest with yourself. If it's I'm uncomfortable on the phone, then it's making phone calls, more and more phone calls. Record those suckers, listen to them, because when you start hearing what you say, you're gonna start changing what you say, all right? But starting from that point of honesty is, 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 a, is a great starting point. So, um, all right, we do a lot of these, um, uh, webinars on PPC lead conversion. We love to do live things. We're going to be doing some at conferences. Um, if you guys like to get invited to those kind of similar to this uh, without the technical difficulties in the future, um, uh, you can always just uh, text us your name and number, or your name and email to this phone number. We'll get you on the invite list for those webinars um, because we want to be able to share all this with you guys so that you know what's going on and how to convert uh, and what's happening. I'm going to check in with Paul one more time and see if his audio is working. Paul, no. <laughs> we lost Paul somehow. Uh, well, Paul's right there. We can wave at Paul at least. Um, guys, keep it simple. Uh, this is going to be recorded. It's going to be posted back on, on Facebook. You can start and stop. But those five, six steps of conversion, if you just do them over and over and there's consistency, you will start seeing consistent pendings, consistent commission checks rolling in and converting those PPC leads. So uh, stick with it. You guys have got this. We're here. If you're a FirePoint client, you know how to reach out to us. Reach out to your account manager. We'll be more than happy to help. Um, I'm going to call Paul after this so we can go back through some of those leads that haven't been followed up with <laughs> and get those going. So uh, anyway, Paul, thank you so much for playing along. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next webinar. Bye.